Good afternoon, good evening everybody, welcome along to the channel, thanks for joining us again for another uh, Team vs Team. So uh, this one came about because it's summer break now uh, for next gen racing, so uh, you might expect me to go live on a Thursday night for the next gen racing again trophy. Uh, they're officially on their mid-season break, uh, but with the mid-season break they're, um, they're allowed to host other events, so they are at the minute Uh, they are at the minute arranging a, um, a team versus team, so I'll go through it in a little bit more detail. I'm just getting the um, the links posted out everywhere, and then I will be right with you. Um, One place down, what, 15 to go. Uh, so we may be joined in the commentary booth by um, a guest tonight, uh, who normally is a host for the Megan Trophy. Uh, so familiar name to the channel, but we've spoken about him in um, in other terms before. Let me um, just get this broken about. So Greener Army might be joining us tonight. Uh, I'm waiting to see if he is. Uh, coming in, I've invited him into the party, so we might just be randomly uh, dropping in. If you see a little blurred out box come up in the top left hand corner of your screen, that means he's joined us. So uh, we'll wait for that to happen. Uh, for some reason, my screen's shrank a little bit. I don't know why that's happened. Right, so let me just get this out. I have my little phone holder up. Oh, Apex Pad, isn't it? Yikes. Betfly, hello, thank you mate, thank you, thank you for jumping in, yes it's my birthday today, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. It's weird having a birthday in lockdown, because I'd normally like trying to arrange to go out for a meal or something, but obviously that can't happen right now, so uh, having to, um, having to make do with other arrangements is a little bit strange, um, but it is what it is mate, it's what it is. Right, let me strap that down there. There we go. Right, so I've got the chat up on my phone now. Um, right, so yeah, so Next Gen Racing. We're familiar with Next Gen Racing. We know who they are. Uh, we know what they do. We know what they're all about. We're familiar with a lot of the drivers as well. Uh, who you're probably not familiar with on the channel. Um, hi, right, Baggy, mate. Thank you for the happy birthday. Appreciate it. Really appreciate that, mate. Are you guys not racing tonight in your group twos? Uh, if you are, mate, good luck in that, and thank you for dropping on in. Uh, the team that next gen are facing tonight is Club 100. Uh, it should be a familiar name to most people who end up watching this, but because someone may accidentally stumble on the channel, um, Club 100 basically a. a, a a karting organisation. Um, if you're familiar with Super GT on YouTube, he does Club 100 karting. If you're familiar with Jimmy Broadbent, he does Club 100 as well. Uh, so we've got some of their drivers in the lobby. Um, I don't know what their sim racing experience is. I've got a list of what their real world sort of experience is, so to speak. Um, but yeah. We'll, uh, we'll obviously go through that. Joining in 10 minutes. Nice on bags, yeah. Cheers, mate. And good luck, to, good luck for your races tonight, mate. Hope they go well for you and hope you're okay. Um, yeah, so just, again, I'm just waiting. I think we've got pretty much everyone in the room we're expecting now. I'm just waiting for Green Army to come and join us. Let me just pop a little message saying now live on YouTube. Send them a nice little message. Cool. Um, 
So I'll give you a little bit of format anyway as to what's what's going on. Two races for you. First race, as you might be able to see on your screen if you've been looking at the screen, is uh, the... Oh, and here he is now. Great, I'm just introducing the races, mate. We'll, we'll go through the thing in a sec. Um, so the first race is going to be the uh, Megan Trophies, cars that we're very familiar with. Uh, it's going to be a 10-minute qualifying session followed by a 20-minute race, and that's going to happen in Talagos. Uh, the drivers will then go to Lago Maggiore. They'll then do another 10 minute qualifying session, another 20 minute race, but this time in the new Mazda GT3 car. And that thing screams. It's a beautiful sounding car. So, but we'll introduce that as we go through. Green up, how are you doing, mate? Thank you for joining in. All right, let me just. Green up, how are you doing, mate? Thank you for. Right. All right, let me just. I can't hear you on stream. So have have you got your audio settings set up correctly? Okay, let me try something else. GT Sport's weird. Sometimes it only lets you be heard when you're spectating. So if you could go into spectator mode and just watch a random car, that would be that would be helpful. Perfect. Right. Let's try saying something for me, mate. Yeah, I can't hear you on stream. Have you got your settings set up correctly? Me and Smoker had this problem when we were doing the um, uh, the race of winners. Pig. Uh, obviously, because I'm hosting the stream, it'll hear me. But because you're in the party, so I'm just anyone who's watching this, I'm just going to give you a blue screen for just a second. And so, if you go into your party settings. And then you go to allow your voice to be shared. That needs to be always allow. I'll give the people some time. So if you go into the party that we're in now, party settings, and then there'll be one that says allow your voice to be shared. That needs to be yes, otherwise the good folks on the other end of YouTube won't be able to hear you. It'd be better then. Okay. We can hear you now. Well, ah, that's good. Right, so if um, if you just want to introduce yourself, Mr. Greener, and uh, let the good folks of YouTube know who you are and what you're all about, and uh, we'll go from there. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I've uh, been racing with Next Gen for about two years now, three years. Um, host the um, a couple of uh, lobbies recently. Um, yeah, I'm always at the back, always building stand castles. Is uh, Chris, you probably already know that anyway. <laughs> Doing some Always agricultural work. Always commenting my sandcastles, uh, building capabilities. But yeah, just uh, thought I'd give my hand a bit of uh, co-coms tonight with you, Chris. Yeah, I know you've been chomping at the bit to uh, to jump behind the mic, mate. So uh, welcome yeah. along. Um, well, there's no there's no special thing to it. We are just chat nonsense, to be fair, um, over what it is. So that's there's really no science to it. We just we just talk and talk and talk. Um, let me just drag up this info. I promise, because I do all this on my phone. I've end I end up having like sixteen different pages open with different things to do. Um, so yeah, race one's going to be the Megans. 
Um, these are Group 4 machines, so they'll be cars that uh, people are pretty familiar with already. Uh, so they're they're the, they're the exact same cars basically that you'd normally see on a Thursday night so if you're here for the normal Thursday night shenanigans you're not going to be disappointed because that's exactly what, it, what you're going to get in a few minutes um, you will then uh, will then go into the GT3 car so a little bit faster, a little bit more downforce, more race orientated cars um, and they will uh, be a lot quicker and a lot twitchier uh, I think with the addition of James now is that all the drivers were expecting? Or are we waiting for anyone else? Uh, we are waiting for James. James has just joined oh. the room. Ah, uh, that's alright then. So, let's have a look. So it's just piped up on the group chat that we've got. Lovely stuff. Um, so if you're watching the, the stream, pop in, say hello, let me know um, who you're supporting and we'll try and give them a little bit of love. Uh, I know some of the racers watch this as well, so feel free to pop in between races and come and say hello and everything else. It's always nice to hear back from you. Uh, we'll try and do you a good job on comms tonight. Burnt fight. I know Mr. Greeno, I've met him genuinely really nice guy. <laughs> I'm sure he, I'm sure he's recovered from the emotional trauma of meeting Burnt Fry, but <laughs> is he uh, on several occasions? Like that's that's, that's yeah. Oh, he's there. Yeah, he's there. See, he's, he's too far away from me to to pose a threat. Uh, one guy I'm really happy to see again is VLX Sparks. So someone that was knocking around in a couple of leagues that I was looking at before. Uh, really quick guy, really nice bloke as well. Uh, him and Apex Predator are going to be the two to watch for me from the next gen side. I don't know too much about the Club 100 guys, but even in practice, like this Treviso fella, um, he's running in some pretty decent time. So he's NM1M. Yeah, so, you know, they're karting lads, so they know how to drive. They're knocking in the good pace as well. As you may also be able to tell, the, each team's rocking their own custom livery. So the next gen boys are in uh, black, orange, and blue, and the Club 100 chaps are in uh, fetching red, black, and purple liveries. So hopefully that will let you distinguish between the two clubs. It is a team versus team event. Uh, so I'll probably expect to see the teams help each other out a little bit potentially but uh, when it gets to the last five minutes of the race kind of the rule book goes out the window and everyone kicks off that's usually the way these things work uh, but we will that's see that's what I'm looking for <laughs> we will see um, I don't know what to expect from the karting lads I've um, I've raced a couple of carters on sim they're, they're pretty, they, they tend to be pretty quick because they you know what I mean? They they do a lot of driving, so they tend to um, they tend to know what they're all about. But um, have you had any experience with these guys? What do you what are you expecting from tonight? No, never, never actually heard of the group until uh, quite recently. So don't think I've actually raced with any of the guys. Um, I think it's going to be a tight one. I think it's going to be an even split. To be fair. Tonight yeah. down the grid. Yeah. I'd probably agree. I mean, there's been a lot of this um, real life racer versus sim racer sort of stuff go on quite lately. This is just the, the latest um, in a long line of things. Um, you'd expect the sim racers to have an advantage because this is their, the, you're in their house, so to speak. Don't go wrong, if we went karting, I think the Club 100 guys would wipe the floor of everyone because that's their thing. Oh. That's what they do. Yeah. Uh, unless you're like a VLX Sparks who does karting himself and stuff like that. So. Yeah, you tend to know that. Mad Marshall in the chat. How are you doing, Mad Marshall? Thank you for jumping in. Stephen Brewell supporting Callum. Uh, is Callum in this lobby? He is. He is. He's sat in the pits, I'm afraid, at the minute, right? Oh, he's coming out. There you go. We'll, we'll have a look at Callum for you for a minute, Stephen. Number 21 for Callum tonight. Uh, yeah, well, I guess the first the first race, the Megan's probably more of a go kart type car than the than the Mazda is. Um, 
So these Sorry, are... We've got everyone in the lobby now, Chris. Sorry. Uh, I'm looking at... I've got... We've got 14 drivers, mate, so... Yeah. That's... Oh, Swoggy's okay. just... just what I was saying that Swoggy's just left, for some reason. How is he? Yeah. Don't know why. <laughs> no yeah. idea. No idea. Well, I'm going to give it a couple minutes before we start then, guys. Okay. No problem. No problem. Joe, Green is hosting this one, so if you're wondering why he's chuntering about race starts and stuff, it's his responsibility to make sure this all runs properly. Oh, uh, no pressure there, then. No, not at all. Not at all, mate. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Cheers for the happy birthday, man, Marshall. Appreciate it. Roberta. Um, Didn't realise that, Chris. Happy birthday, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 30, 35 today, mate. I'm, like, it's a birthday in lockdown, so I'm not. it's not like I'm going out getting drunk. I'm just getting drunk on the sim instead. So. Nah, that's so right, mate. I, I celebrated my 40th beginning of May in lockdown. It was great. <laughs> uh, I'm not a birthday guy, like... I'm not a big birthday celebrator anyway. I'm not one of, like you know some people whose birthday have a birthday week, don't they? <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not one yeah. of them dudes. Like I'll, I'll go out for a couple of beers and maybe a meal. That's that's it. Like, I don't like to make a fuss about it. Um, appreciate the happy birthdays all the same guys really do. Really do appreciate it. Um Swoggy right, has rejoined. Yes, yes, let's see if he's readied up. He has, it's just me and you. There we go. Uh, qualifying so, is now starting. Perfect. So the qualifying then will sort the men from the boys, sort the starting grid for Interlagos. Track position does mean quite a lot here. It's not exactly the easiest track to overtake on. Uh, turn one, probably the optimal place to make an overtake in the race, but we'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, the guys <laughs> haven't got tyre wear on or anything, have they? Uh, no, it's uh, no tyre wear, no fuel. So um, they can just hop up. Yeah, basically. This is probably probably what we'll see them doing. Um, so yeah, just expect to see them get a little bit, of, try and get a little bit of slipstream. They'll not be worrying about fuel burning or anything like that. They'll just be going for it. And in terms of times, ten minutes is plenty of time. We're looking at about what one thirty something a lap. Yeah, I think people are doing one thirty threes. I think. 133. That's that's the alien time to look out for. Well, it is. Yeah, yeah. So there's a club 100 guys are straight out there. Uh, just waiting for the fingers to reset. There we go. There we go. Swag is the first one out on track, so he'll be the first one to set a time. But everyone's going to follow pretty quickly after that. I, think. I don't know if you mentioned it before I come on air, Chris, but um, Jordan. JPH from next year and did all the liveries there. Uh, look pretty stunning out on both both sides of the teams. He did, did he do them? Did he? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jordan did that. JPH did them uh, for both sides. Um, they look rather stunning, I must admit. He's um, he's pretty good at his liveries as our JPH. Oh yeah. Swag has picked up a penalty on his outlap. Well, that's not ideal. So he's going to have to slow down and serve that. That's uh, kind of ruined his first lap of qualifying. He's going to have to wait for everyone to go by now. Uh, first one to settle the lap is going to be Browner. Followed closer by Berg for eight. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll just have a look at the guys' times as they come round. Uh, probably halfway towards the end of qualifying. We'll jump on board one of the cars. Uh, we'll go for a little bit of a track um, track guide of Interlagos just to show you the, the points of interest, so to speak. Obviously, Interlagos real world track based in Brazil uh, called Interlagos Literal Translation in, in between lakes. Uh, so, between two giant lakes in uh, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Uh, quite famous for hosting uh, season finale F1 races. Famous that it is that Glock moment coming around the end. More recently, Lewis Hamilton T boning Alexander Albon off. So it's it's uh, seen its fair share of action this track as we see burnt fire sliding his way around it. Yeah, I think burnt fire is going to be posting the first time. Well, there's potentially one to watch for next gen. Is burnt fire is, is a is a quick guy when he's on it. I don't know what sort of practice any of these guys have had, but. Um, 
yeah, you, you do need your practice in these cars to really get the best out of them. So you just see Marky Boy just cut, cut the very end of Junkau, and that's, yeah, that's just going to harm him a little bit, I'm afraid. So he's going to have to serve a little bit of a penalty. So Benfire's going to set the provisional pole time and the benchmark for everyone else to meet, and it's going to be a 34-1. So we'll just wait for these times to pile in. Cal sets the pole time and then is immediately beaten by Sid Barrett. Well, this is surprising as it stands. Yeah. <laughs> the Club I'm 100 guys were <laughs> dominating the top of the leaderboard. Sparks has just got in there and so he's sort of representing the sim lads a little bit. But um, yeah, from. Well, Apex Predator's done a 36.8 and we know he's that's way off pace for him. Um, he will expect to see Apex Predator up up there for me. I think he'll I think he'll be one of the top guys. Uh, so after the first lap, Sid Barrett 84 uh, from Club 100, car number 30 is your pole sitter. Uh, with Sparks next to him, we've got five minutes left, of course, so another, uh, you know enough time for another handful of laps to get underway. Has a muppet. Yep, you're right. <laughs> you're not wrong about that. I know. I know he listens to the stream as well. So, like, there he is. Flash your lights, you muppet. Come on, come on, Bert Fry. Flash your lights. Come on, do as you're told. Yeah. He, he there we go. <laughs> yeah, he's a good. He's a good lad. He's a good. Lad. Right, let's jump on board. Let's jump on board with Sparks because he's just coming across to um, to set another time. I'll take you for a little bit of uh, a track guide of Interlagos. Now I'm, I'm not. I know a couple of the corner names, not a lot of them, and I, the ones that I kind of know, I'll pronounce them wrong, so I won't even bother. I'll just call it this corner and that corner. Don't look at me. That'd be turn one, turn two, three, four, five mm -hmm. for me. <laughs> there or thereabouts. So, breaking into the centre S, you want to tuck it. Sparks has just missed it a little bit there. You want to really tuck yourself into that um, apex on the inside. That uh, really sets you up for the remainder of the corner uh, as he just battles with Wace. Uh, coming down into turn four, another action point on the Retro Aposta. Big breaking zone and one that if you be a little bit brave as Sparks is being right here and he's off yeah there we go <laughs> so probably not Commentate the best commentate this guys let's jump on board with who else is going round circuit in fact we'll stay on board with Sparks he's come back out of the pits anyway he's about, he's about where we left off um, but that that bit we've just covered is you know half of the high speed section of Interlagos um, you then get into the, sort of what I would call McGann territory, which is the twisty infield section. Um, and if a um, if you're going to make a mistake, you're going to you're going to really make it down here. Okay, so if we decide a lago, and that's what I'm going to pronounce wrong a lot. Uh, up into Ferragura, it's it looks like it looks a lot faster than it actually is. You actually need to slow down quite a lot for the first apex to catch the second apex correctly. Uh, then come a series of hairpins and chicanes uh, down into Pinarino. Uh, you want to really hook up the inside apex on this, get on the power nice and early. Be very careful braking on the outside not to catch a wheel on the grass because that will send you backwards into a wall and that's not a good place for a car to be. Uh, try and give it the full beans as you come down towards Junkau. Uh, exit speed out of Junkau, the final corner is everything for a good lap time. You really want to hook up the apex on here. You can ride the apex all the way on the way out. And then it's an uphill drag. Uh, which we saw, was it Kefia or was it Gas? Uh, it was Gasly versus Hamilton up here in the F1, weren't it? Uh, side by side. And that's in two parts a lap of Interlagos. So this is we go around uh, Apex Predator has now gone pole with a 33 1 so wrapping it up for the sim lads Apex Predator in first position at the minute Sid Barrett still rocking that 33 2 which uh, currently puts him alongside Sparks we've just been on board with he's going to be hoping that this lap is a good one now Cal's got some support in the comments 
able to stick on board with him as he comes up the hill. Uh, he's fourth at the minute with a 33-4, so he's very close here and very close at the top. Yeah, yeah, there's not much separating separating anyone, to be fair. Oh, who's that? NM1M. And just gone fourth. That's a 33-3. So the top. Let's have a look at this. Let's actually get some. Carl's so gone in um, front of Sparks as well. And that last lap that he just did. So the top ten separated by eight temps. And that is not a lot of time. Okay. All right. Let's grab some info on these. Uh, Club 100 guys, there we go. Let me save that. Okay, so Sid Barrett. Uh, so he's in his 12th year of Club 100. Uh, and he's currently leading the heavy sprint 60. Uh, obviously due to lockdown. Uh, and uh, he won round one. I think round one happened and then lockdown happened. So he's currently the leader of that one. Uh, who else have we got? Trevisio. Have I got any info on Trevisio? Let me have a look. Uh, Trevisio, aka okay, Trevor, uh, multiple sprint champion, and he actually races on a pad. So, the guy we're looking at right now, he's a pad player. Which some would say is a disadvantage. So, as a. <laughs> well, I think it, it can help you turn a little bit quicker, but you're not as smooth. It's hard no. to be It's hard to be as smooth. Uh, but there's some aliens out there. Well, yeah, well, they're, they're, they're winning. They're winning car championships for a reason because they're quick blows. Yeah. Uh, NM1M is his first year of Club 100, but uh, if his pace and is anything to go by, I'm sure he'll do just fine. We'll name Nathan. Uh, Cal, now Callum's got some support in the comments. Uh, is a, is, he is a GT Academy finalist in 2014, so he knows his sim as well. Um, it's also his first season in Club 100, but again, look at his, looking at his pace, he's got. You're not going to have any worries, mate. You'll be absolutely fine. I don't really have any information on Kirif, I'm afraid. We'll just have to figure him out as we go. Uh, Marky boy, uh, so he's a GT Academy national finalist three years in a row as well, um, and he's currently second in the ch um, Club 100 heavies champs, uh, or he was in 2017. So getting ahead of myself a little bit here. Um, Browner is the 2019 heavyweight sprint runner-up so put it this way these guys are quick right talking about so. quick Sparks has gone pole with a 133.107 that is a lap so we have two sim racers uh, or two next gen guys I think is probably the best way to put them because some of the Club 100 guys do sim as well uh, so Sparks and Apex Predator will line up on the front row of the grid. But uh, Sid and Trevisio, well, let's see if they can change anything for that. Uh, so far, no. Marky Boy sets a new qualifying time, 33.6 for Marky Boy. Uh, so then you've got two... Uh, well, yeah, then you've got an absolute sea of Club 100 drivers behind it. So we've got Sid Barrett, Trevisio. Uh, we've got uh, NM1M, Cal, Kirif, Marky Boy. Uh, pretty much take us from third to eighth, and then the next next gen contestant is in ninth. There's full confirmation of your standings. We're into the race. So I'm just trying to keep up with things. So we'll... Stephen Bull, go Cal. Mate, he's quick. <laughs> he's a quick dude. 14 races, 20 minutes. Uh, all in the same car. Uh, they all have the same tyres. No pit strategy. It's pure pace. So away the drivers go then. Curbing that wheel spin. Everyone seems to have got away well. Wace has got a really good start at the back. It'd be interesting to see if he can make advantage of that. Does everyone keep it clean through the centre S's? Got my finger on the replay mark. And, yeah, but even that, I mean, they they went free wide, yeah, and, and no one's fired off yeah. into a barrier, so I don't, <laughs> I don't think anyone's going to be mad at that. Um, especially if, if you've been, yeah, if you've been watching the the like the F1 stuff that they've been doing, and they've just been spinning each other off every corner. Like, 
that these guys do tend to keep it pretty clean. But look at this, look at this pack. The Club 100 guys just look like a, a, an angry sea of sharks chasing down their prey. Let's just go back through the field. So currently VLX Sparks is leading the race. Uh, joined up there by Apex Predator in second. Then you've got uh, Sid Barrett chasing around third with Trevisio and Cal fourth and fifth respectively. Um, NM1M is looking to make moves up the field. Though feels he can get past Cal. So far, we'll see if that uh, we'll see if they're working together. Uh, Kirif is holding the floodgates back, and then you've got Swaggy uh, swarming away behind with Brown in ninth, Marky Boy tenth at the minute. Burnt Fry is currently in eleventh, with Race in twelfth. Uh, that good start. Oh, is he just gets it a little bit slightly and junk out? That's going to affect his speed all the way up the main straight. James Tywall's now going to get up to thirteenth uh, with P Gibb uh, at the minute. Uh, in the last place. Uh, we'll jump back up to the start then. Pretty much line astern. Uh, I don't see any moves being made into T1. Everyone's keeping it nice and sensible, I think. Uh, Sid's just drafted on uh, Apex Predator at the moment. He's getting a bit of a toe, I think. It's closing him down in the braking zones. Um, just can't find a way past. Well, the good thing with you in spectate mode as well is you can watch different fights that I'm watching on stream and let, let us know if anything's kicking off. Yeah, we'll do. If that's what you want to do. I don't know if you're yeah, streaming on Twitch as well, I'm not sure. Uh, Burnt Forest picked up a little bit of a penalty. I'm guessing that's a track cut. You can get that really easy at turn four if you take a little bit too much curb. It's very easily done. Cliche, welcome along, mate. Thank you for joining us join us for next gen racing versus races from the club 100 karting circuit um, and i'll tell you what they're certainly proving themselves to be fast guys sid barrett is looking to make moves on apex predator and i don't think i've ever seen anyone overtake apex predator yet so this will be a new one on me if someone can get past him <laughs> i'll be uh well, probably about my birthday So VLX Sparks is starting to break away at the front. 1.2 seconds is the gap between him and second place. And we know we know Sparks is a very fast guy. We've seen him on the channel before. We just see Swaggy there pop his nose out. Uh, can he make a move through the centre S? I don't think he was close enough. Oh, there's been an incident, I think. Something happened there. Board of Swaggy and see if he was involved in that because he's, he's dropped a few places. So Swaggy down the centre S's curve gets a little bit wrong and uh, GT Sport contact physics at play again. Um, if you're watching my stream, that just that proves or for me shows what, what is good about like next gen and stuff because Swaggy made the contact, just backed out of it straight away, slowed down, off the racing line, let everyone else continue and get up to speed and just carried on. Um, that's sportsmanship, ladies and gentlemen, that's what you need to see more. Unfortunately, that's cost him a couple of places, finds himself down in 12 now. Uh, Apex uh, Predator has been overtaken. Yes, he has. You missed it. Well, I've replay marking oh. it so we can go back. Apex Predator is going He's straight back at him now. He has, yeah. yeah. question is though for me did he pull the trigger too early because um, you've now got about a mile's worth of road <laughs> to go uh, and Sid is, is, is well in the slipstream he's bringing Trevisio along with him for the ride as well he's alongside of him not completely yet but he's there and thereabouts I'll tell you what a move around the outside of the Santa S is, is doable that's gonna be it is doable is he got no. it no, no. no backed out well, let's just jump on board with Sid and go back and have a look at that movie pulled on Apex Predator. Oh, we go back a little bit too late. So let me try that again. Oh, he got the move. He got the move made way before I caught it on camera. So a frantic first five minutes then. We're seeing 
you're seeing people sort of fall into a natural order now. A couple of little bits of penalties knocking about, you will see that. Um, the track cut penalties on GT Sport aren't exactly favourable. Um, you will get a penalty for even looking at the track limits. They're not the best in the world. So, the top, I was going to say the top six ought to be breaking away, but they're not. There's a, the only real sort of gap forming is between first and second. Just, there's a lot to be said about how close this lobby is. Everyone, uh, the whole field is still within 12 seconds. Let's have a look at the comments. Anyone on there? Not so far. Looks like Brownie's got a good run on Burnt Fry. Like that looked like no, for those contact there. I think he's got him. He's going to take him into turn one. We're watching it now. Burnfried works his way up to 10th. No, I'm sorry. Brown has ghosted out for some reason. Okay, how you doing, mate? Burnfly is going for this move back, though. Uh, yeah. Brown is forcing him to the outside. Burnfly is potentially going to go for the cutback move. I'm seeing a little bit of lag in the lobby, mate. I don't know if you're seeing the same thing. Nope. Got... Thank you. <laughs> My internet this week has been absolutely dreadful. I don't know if it's a lobby path. I think it's my connection. Yeah, it... I'm not seeing any lag on mine. I think, yeah, I honestly think it's my connection, mate. Um, I was racing on Tuesday and it was awful. And to the point where I just left the race, it's like, I can't, I can't do it. I'm even getting messages up on my screen now saying my internet connection is not, not good enough. But I'm on fibre optic, so it should be. Right, let's keep up with things. Oh, there's moves being made for second again. Sid Barrett trying to go round the outside at oh, the centre S's. Uh, doesn't manage to get that done. Uh, I'm still showing the streamer live on my side, so we should be okay. We seem to be running fine. They're um, bringing four and five into play. They're squabbling too much. I think mean, it's going to bring. It's going to be a four-way battle for second come to the last 10 minutes this is the thing with these sprint races though there's, there's very little in the way of strategy uh, to make you think oh no I won't battle that guy just yet because it'll kill my tyres or anything though you see it in the the, the Magan the yeah. Magan trophy all the time they, they will just battle all race long um, because it doesn't matter it's not like they're going to chew the tyres up or go through the fuel though. and that makes for better racing for me in these short races that's what you want you want to see that yeah. Um, so Club 100 are, um, are trying to climb their way up the podium at the minute. Um, of course, racers will earn points based on their finishing positions, I believe, is the way we're doing this. So uh, the more guys you can get sort of in the top half of the table, the better. Of course, next gen racing are one and two at the minute, so they will score highly, but Club 100 are pretty much occupying the rest of the top ten. So yeah, that's Burnt Fry's managed to get past Browner. He's pulled away from Browner now. As we just watched Sid Barrett make it up into second place down past Apex, but it was a lovely executing move on the brakes. Uh, potentially a little bit understated just how well he got his braking done there. Uh, I was just going to keep an eye on it, see if Apex Predator goes again. So he's, he's alongside. Has he got that turned? Oh, he's gone wide. Oh, no. He's got it done again. He's got it done. So we're going to see these guys squabbling. And you're right, you know, Trevisio um, and yeah. M1 are right there with them now. Uh, this isn't always bad news for Sid Barrett, though. I don't think Trevisio's going to give them that much. Like, he won't kill his teammate. <laughs> it'll, probably, it'll probably help him. Um, but uh, once we get into the last couple of minutes, it's kind of every man for themselves. Well, let's just go and have a look. Is, sorry, I was just about to say Sparks is just sort of a 4.70 lead now. Second lead. Over the battle for second. <laughs> yeah, 
You know what, that would that were beautiful breaking by Sid Barrett there to get that move made on uh, Apex Predator down into T1. Just so composed. And you can tell these guys do this a lot. So the top five beginning to break away then. A little bit of a gap to Marky Boy in six. He in turn's got a little gap to Cal. Um, Cal and that's just importantly though, all these guys are still in the tow. So they're still getting a little bit of suck action going up the main straight. And you've got Kiriff in 8th at the minute, just outside of the slipstream. Burtfire doing a great job in ninth. He's the next next-gen racer, um, aside from the top two. And there's a Browner who's just picking up the odd track cut penalty. And I certainly won't read into that, that anyone's cheating. It's just you, you get them for minor infringements. It's nothing too serious. And then the three next-gen guys of Swaggy, P. Gibb and James Tyrewall having their own little battle at the back. Uh, we have lost Wace from the race. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. I thought we lost someone. Yeah, it's Wace just left the room. Um, whether it was internet connection or what, who knows. Hi from Switzerland. Oh, we've gone international. Fastwinder, thanks for joining in, mate. Hopefully, uh, hopefully our accents are understandable. That's all I can hope and pray for you, mate. Me and John are two are two different spectrums of the English language at the minute, north and south. Yep. <laughs> I have gravy on everything, and John lives on a diet of prosecco and cheese. If you, if you <laughs> believe what the tablet. <laughs> that's right, isn't it? That's, <laughs> that's, what, that's what Brexit will have you believe, anyway. <laughs> This battle for second again. Sid Barrett's just going to send it down the inside again. A lovely yeah, on the brakes. Oh, yeah. he's, he's done that again. But are we going to see Apex Predator just go for that move again? Down into turn four. He's tucked himself yeah, under the rear wing. Sid Barrett's having to go defensive. So, so Sid Barrett is really good on those brakes, I tell you. Oh, he's got, he's got a beautiful left foot, that man. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Predator's gone back in front. He's got it. Yeah. But the amount of times we've seen this position change, he's certainly not uh, not got it for good. Uh, he's having to go immediately defensive. The Club 100 driver, Sid Barrett, um, on him like a fat kid on a cupcake, mate. It's got to be said, he's not letting him get out of sight at, at all. Uh, he's come through the twisty infield section uh, Sid just goes for an absolute again, dive down the inside uh, not an ounce of contact though the gap was there and Sid went for it coming into John Cow then again uh, he sensibly doesn't make a move there um, he's going to do his favourite uh, which is get the slipstream all the way down to turn one and get the move made down there instead Let's just keep an eye on this. It's hard to take my eyes off this battle for a second. This could pop off at any time. Good. I've just, I've just been going back down the field, and uh, Mikey Boy is now getting on the back of uh, this train for second place as well. It wasn't far. Oh, Apex Predator has just got a little bit. It's got a little bit of a tap, and he's now down to fifth. Oh, I'd imagine he's not going to let that one lie. Though we'll go back. We'll just jump on board of Apex Predator and just see how that happened. That was a result of Sid going for the move, but I think this was just GT Sport contact physics at its finest. Uh, yeah, a tiny insignificant nudge on Sid's rear quarter uh, and it sent Apex Predator off into a spin, so uh, racing incident, no one's fault, but it has put Apex Predator down in the pack. Now we did say it was going to kick off. Five minutes to go. <laughs> <laughs> and we were right. Oh. contact there as well. That, yeah, that was just Marky Boy getting his braking wrong, I think, a little bit. <laughs> uh, if anything, that gave Apex Predator a little bit of a boost. Yeah. Um, so Trevisio is not going to make this easy. Uh, he will make that McGann as wide as he possibly can. Uh, let's just check in with the rest of the field. I think it's only right we do so. So you're right, M uh, NM1M. I'm just going to call you N. It's just easier. Uh, Hazard got involved in that battle for second now. He's right on the tail of that. Cal doing a good job in seventh. Has been really consistent this race so far. Um, so, so far, seventh place for Cal. He has been dropping Kiriff behind. Kiriff's coming under pressure from Burnt Fry. 
Just keep an eye on this, see if Burnt Fry can make a move down at T1. Um, Kira Close enough, I think. Well, he's already been defensive. Burnt Fry's going to have to do this a long way round. He does break he later. Does so get it round the, the outside. Has he got him? Oh, he's oh. Side, they're side by side. I uh, don't. He, he just ran out of steam. It's he just run out of grip in that McGann, and that's all that happened. So coming down to turn four, can he do it again? He's back on his under his wing. Gonna have to go around the outside again. That's dangerous. It's, he's got it though. He's done he's the outside. Got it. He's, that's a lovely move. So that's burn fire up to eighth, but again, I, as we've ever this race, that's not the end of it, I don't think. <laughs> anything no. could anything no. could happen. No. So Sparks now seven and a half, approaching eight seconds ahead in the lead. Uh, so he's joined the untouchable crew now, and unless he makes a catastrophic error, uh, he's pretty much safe up there. Let's hope that's not commentator's curse though. Sid Barrett and Trevisio occupy the remaining podium positions at the minute, but Apex Product is showing good intent to get back there. Just looking at Sparks' his fastest lap as well, that's a 132.8. So that's a lot faster than we saw in qualifying. He's done that with no yeah. slipstream as well. Yeah. Ridiculous pace. Watching that T if Apex put it, we're going to go for a move down into T1, but he didn't go for it in the end. Yeah. Right, so let's go and check back in on Burnt Fry, see how much pressure he's getting. He's picked himself up a little penalty. And he will have dared look at the track limits, no doubt. So that's, um, that's him scorned for life by the um, stewards of Gran Turismo. Well, uh, Brown has got one as well behind him. Yeah, you've seen him pop so. up, he's got a second. Bloody hell. Yeah. That's tantamount to murder in GT Sport, a second panel. How many corners did he have to miss? He's <laughs> 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 right, just strapped a jet engine to the back of his car, that's the sort of thing. Right then, so 1 minute 45 remaining. The way it works in GT Sport, for those unfamiliar, once the timer reaches zero, and um, whatever lap you're on at that point is your last lap. So if you're just about to cross the finishing line, that's it, you're done for the race. Um, so some racers will potentially go on to do an additional lap. Some won't. Um, let's have a check back on Sid. A little bit of a gap, Sid has. He's, um, he's using Treviso as a little bit of a buffer. He's not reeling yeah. an Apex Sparks that quick. Uh, feel like Sparks that quickly. I'm seeing lag again on my screen. I'm wondering if Ooh. during the break, mate, I might just go and give my internet a kick. Oh, uh, mate. Just do this stream in two parts, you know. That might be easier. Yeah. So will we get a little five minute break or something? Right up on the So whereabouts are they in their lap? Will they get around to make another one? So this is gonna be their last lap now. They won't get around is. in time. No. Um, I think everyone now is on their last lap, given how long it's gonna yeah. take them all to get around. So this is it, just a handful of corners remain. If you count in the last bend as a corner, that's technically four corners remain in order for Apex Predator to get himself back on the podium. Uh, we'll give Sparks yeah, some yeah, kudos in a minute. Let's see if it is that Glock moment carries on. I don't think he's going to do it. Like, he's had a look. He's had a look. He's going to try and get the slipstream approach going forward. Uh, up the last straight, but Treviso got Sid slipstream. Uh, it's just checking with Sparks as he comes across the line on 13th final lap to win race number one. Great dominant performance by VLX Sparks. Um, Sid Barrett with some superb driving takes second with Treviso in third. Apex Predator does get fourth in the end. He'll probably be a little bit disappointed with that one. Uh, Marky Boy grabs fifth in the end with NM1 in sixth. Cal 401 finishes in 7th with Burnt Fry 
uh, in eighth. He did see off Kirif in the end, who finished in ninth with Browner in tenth. P. Gibbs kind of bring it home in eleventh with James Tyrell and Swaggy uh, rounding out your grid. So that was race number one. Uh, we will. Let me just have a little bit of an internet test. Because I tend to know exactly when my internet has been a bugger. Sometimes a reset doesn't quite fix it. Let's have a look. Ping 15 milliseconds, due to 6 milliseconds. Yeah, so they're fine, mate. A reset's not going to fix my issue. Right. Okay. So, race number one has uh, has completed. Uh, let's just have a little bit of a look at the race results then. So as you can tell, Sparks in the end finishing just under eight seconds ahead of pretty much everyone else. Uh, and then you've got one, two, three. So you've got, you've got Sid Barrett and Trevisio uh, representing Club 100, finishing second and third respectively. Um, Apex put it a fourth in the end for him. Uh, you got Marky Boy fifth, NM1M sixth, Cal seventh, Burnt Fry in eighth, uh, representing Next Gem. Uh, Kirif in ninth with Browner in tenth, P Gibb. Finished 11th for James Tywall, 12th and Swaggy in 13th. Uh, so, what's going to happen now? We're going to be changing over to... Is it the GP version of Lago Maggiore? It certainly is, yeah. So, the big, yeah. the big daddy. Um, and we're going to be taking to the road in the Mazda. Uh, the new GT3 car. So, it, it's not a real car. Uh, you can't go and buy one or you can't see them driving around in real life. Um, but it is a screaming demon. Uh, sort of like, it. think of it as a concept car, it's probably the best way of thinking about it. Uh, so we'll get a look at those in just a second. Waste disconnected. Uh, did he? Right. I'm going to change the race room ready for the next one. No worries. So we'll have um, we'll have qualifying again. So we'll have another ten minute qualifying session, uh, followed by a twenty minute race. So nice, nice short punchy, um, punchy races tonight. Easy to follow. So the tracks just loading up, ready. Um, so what's that? Eight minutes before we kick off. Oh, is it starting time? at twenty past? Yeah, yeah. We're yeah, we're running about ten minutes behind, waiting for um, a few people to come in to the first race. So. Oh, right, yeah. okay. Yeah. So yeah, we'll we'll be kicking off at twenty past. Okay, right. I might um, get myself out in the Mazda and have a little bash. Okay. Okay, right. Let's have a quick look. Let's move my phone. I have plugged my wheel in. Yeah, I have. I've not. I don't think I've driven this Mazda yet as well. I've bought it, but I've not got it. I've not driven it. So I don't even a think I've got it. Well, I bought it, and then typically I got it gifted to me. <laughs> so always the way. So I've got two. Yeah, so I bought. That's the one I bought, and then that's the one I got gifted. All right. Let's stick some racing soft tyres on. We don't need traction control, do we? Nah, we don't want any of that. Alright, let's have a go. See what it's like. So, I may well make an absolute utter mess of this. And yes, that is the noise of a rotary engine. Sounds beautiful. Right, I might go quiet a minute, Chris. Um, I need to get myself a drink. So, this car and track combo is the choice of the Club 100 drivers. This was what they wanted to do. The GT3 at Lago Maggiore, as I get a big drift on. Yeah, I told you I'd not driven this car before. Um, 
this is probably one of my favourite tracks in Gran Turismo. It's a fictional one. It's not. It's not a real track. You can't again. You can't go here and drive. Let me just let these guys through. They're doing their practice. They sound like old F1 cars. Beautiful sounding car. So I just thought I'd show you what um, the drivers will be watching as we smash a cone off the circuit. Uh, it's got a little bit of front brake balance. Back end does get unstable on braking, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. Trail braking might help that. Uh, just a little bit nicer with the weight transfer, I think. Too late that I can tell that. There's lots of elevation changes you can tell on this track. Uh, that does affect your braking. Uh, specifically a big hairpin on this circuit which is downhill and uphill you do your braking downhill and you actually turn as the car's going uphill uh, it makes it hella fun to be honest this car's steering's a little bit unpredictable uh, it's certainly going to take some getting used to these are my first laps in the car so that's my excuse as dealt with I'm in the 154s for a GT3 car that I'm kind of more used to at this track. Potentially a 153 if I hook a good lap up. So if I'm under a 156 for this, I'll be quite happy with it. Yeah, I'm just doing this, got a few minutes to play with before the race 2 starts. I want 56 to loss. I'm alright with that. probably put me down the back of this field like Get out of it. Ugh. Let's check in on the comments. Let's see if anyone's saying anything. Burnt for I gutted with that result. Um yeah, yeah, I can see why, mate. But look, you're in a field really quick, dude. It's not like you're in a slow lobby. Right. If you're in a lobby of like brand new people. And you know what I mean? You got like eighth place in that or whatever you got, then yeah, I couldn't understand your frustration, but 
Thanks, you might recognise the company you're in. And these are some fast guys. Uh, so, let's have a swig of beer because my folk's getting a little bit dry. There's a Cal walking in the 54 3 in practice. Uh, we're about ready to get qualifying underway. Let me just check I'm not entered anymore. One minute. Yeah, I'm not entered, so I won't appear on track. Uh, so, a 10 minute qualifying session to set us the grid for race number two. Looks like we've got everyone in the. Uh, in the lobby, readied up. A few people sat in the pits. Um, so we're ready to go, I think. We are. I'm just making sure that everyone's going to be back. I just don't want anyone to lose any time. Well, I've got 14 drivers on track with Swaggy and Way sat in the pits. Right, okay. I'm going to start qualifying then, guys. No, Dave. Based on the little bit of practice we did have before, a 54 is probably the sort of times you want to be watching out for the top guys doing. Um, I do know that a 53 is possible if you really do hook a good lap together. Uh, so same that you're used to, we've got a 10 minute qualifying session now and that's going to be preceded by a uh, 20 minute race. That will conclude tonight's action. So half an hour remains, and I will be free. you'll be free of me. And me. <laughs> I don't think I've ever raced on the GT uh, GP circuit. Have you not? No, oh, mate, it's a beaut. Well, I was just saying before, it's probably my favourite circuit. Well, I'm not now Spa's added. I'll change that. Spa's my favourite circuit. Um, but this does this does promote some really good racing. So let's see who can upset the apple cart here. Very different challenge, these cars, as you've seen. Uh, the grip's not quite there in them. Um, they will get a little bit skittish with you. The back end does like to stick out once you release the brake, so probably you'll see a lot of guys playing around with the brake bias throughout the race. And as we've got Browner out and he's out that now, he's going to be the first one to set us the time as it stands. Uh, he's got Sparks in tow. Uh, again, as with the last race, they are all restricted to the same tyre, which in this regard is the racing soft. None of them have any tyre wear on, none of them have their fuel depleting, um, and none of them are allowed to set up their car aside from the standard setup. So it is purely down to driver, um, driver adaptability, talent, and skill is probably the best way to say it. Again, JPH has done a lovely job with these liveries. And he's had to create individual ones for everyone as well. That's another thing to say. You'll notice how everyone's got their own numbers on there. Um, it's not just I've made two liveries. He's made, and he's done them for both lobbies, he's probably made about 40 liveries. Yeah, so he's, he's he's put also, some time I think also on the uh, Club 100 cards, he's changed the colour of the front balance. Yeah, so they'll all have custom colours on a certain part of the car, yeah. as we see on Browner's car, it's like an luminous green, on Sparks it's a lovely shade of blue, and Apex Planet has just gone for black, he's like, I'm serious, <laughs> just black, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a serious guy, yeah, so he's put some effort into this, which is good to see, I mean, it helps, it? it helps the spectacle. So guys on the uh, guys on the fast laps now. Really? Sparks well and truly in the toe of the car ahead. And if yeah. anything now he's gonna start holding him up. Yeah, Sparks has had to get out of it there, so although the slipstream will have helped him out a little bit. 
Brown, I just made a little bit of a mistake. He just makes another little mistake again. And these Mazdas are very tricky on the brake pedal. Of course, these guys have had way more time to practice with that brake pedal than I have, but um, you, can see, you can see Brown are doing it just again there. Uh, the back end just likes to step out when you release the brake. So let's see what the first times on the board are going to be. A 54.6 for Sparks, even though we know his lap got um, messed up is the wrong word, but compromised is probably a better one. Marky boy, a 53.9. That's a beautiful lap, Marky boy. He's, um, he's put himself right at the top. That's gonna be gonna be famous last words here. That's gonna be a hard lap to beat. Um, as Sid Barrett comes incredibly close with a 53.9 <laughs> as well, just uh, just five hundredths of a second behind. So the Club 100 guys, this is their um, car and chat track choice. So this was their one, weren't it, John? This is what they wanted to use. Yeah, this is what they chose. Uh, we had the McGowan, well, thank you, I've always had the McGowan. I expect them to absolutely run away with this one. Yeah, the way it looks at the moment, I think they've um, they've done their homework on this track. But the question is, can we see Sparks actually just upset the apple cart then? Well, yeah, pole or possibly second. We do uh, we do need a next gen racer up there. Currently, Sparks is the fastest Sparks. next gen guy. He is, yeah. But we, we are expecting. He's on an outlap again, so he's, he came into the pits to get himself in some fresh air. Um, so his times at the minute are not to really be trusted. Uh, looking at the leaderboard, Trevisio's, uh, everyone's on better laps. So we're going to see the, the field mix up again, I think, once everyone comes across the start finish line because pretty much everyone was setting personal best sectors. Browner, 54-2 for him, that puts him fifth. Apex Predator, 54-2 as well. Uh, Trevisio does beat the time. He puts in a 53-5. And to put himself in a provisional pole position, promptly sends himself off the track as well. Sid Barrett with a 53-5 as well the fastest lap so far and uh, he goes nearly four hundredths faster than Trevisio uh, so Club 100 utterly dominant at the top of the uh, at the top of the qualifying standing so far can Apex Predator and Sparks do anything about that even Burnt Fire I know Burnt Fire qualifies well I wonder if he's got uh, got this car under his belt yet have a quick look at those live times yeah, so Apex Paddock went purple set to one uh, Sparks is on personal best times as well Apex Paddock has just come purple set to two it's definitely worthwhile keeping an eye on his lap uh, so repping it for next gen are you watching him mate? yeah I'm just watching him now yeah he's um, taking the lines nicely hopefully Maybe you can push yourself up the grid. Um, where he wants to be, that is. Purple again. Sector Two 3. Yeah. Oh, his car's Two. lost it in front of him. Let's hope now. Brown has stayed way out of the way there. That's good Good on him again. Um, just two corners to go for Apex Predator to uh, um, upset the apple cart a little bit. Damo, thanks for tuning in, mate. Appreciate you stopping by. How are you doing? So 53.5 is the time to beat. Apex Predator gets in there with a 53.3. Oh, wait. I'm, that's a right time. Burnt Fire puts a 54.3 on the board as well. So that's a good time for him. Sparks finally represents with a 53.7. Puts him in fifth at the minute. So we see NM just improved behind him with a 54-0. Again, very close in qualifying. Ridiculously close. So a second, just over a second, separates the top 10. Uh, with a 
again everyone now setting further laps quite a few personal best lap times coming in there as well uh, showing that people are improving their times but at the minute the man in the ascendancy is Mr Apex Predator let's see what his time is oh, he's down I'm not surprised to be fair because that was a hell of a lap from him a 53-3 I'm just giving an eye on Sparks to see what he can do. It's a bit, uh, a bit ropey at the moment. He's all over the road. He's just coming around on the bike crib. No, yeah, he took that nicely. He took the apex nicely. Oh, he's ran wide. He's doing a me. He's doing the same castles. <laughs> Good bit of off-roading, mate. It's um, it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah, no, he slowed the bike down. I think he's just... I don't know if he's waiting for traffic to go past. So, have another stab at it. So 20 seconds chain. remain. If they can get... It. Anyone that gets across the line in the next like, 15 seconds can set another lap. So, Apex Predator is going to go again. Um, since Spark Barrett... Gonna make it. No, I, don't, I was just looking back at these guys. I don't think Sid's going to make it as well. Not no, he's quite. not. No, he's not. So there's not many guys out on track left to set another time. Uh, it does improve, though. 53-4 for Sid. So like, again, it's an absolute blinding time. Uh, Spark doesn't get to set a time. I hate my internet connection. I'm just going to yeet my router out of the wall. So, Apex Predator, one of the guys out on another lap. Let's see if it improves, he's not improving. Who's still out? Down there. <coughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looks like he's took a hell of a lot of corner there. <coughs> Excuse me. I think he's still going. Trying to put a lap in. Let's check on that guy. He's four temps down on his best yeah, laps. This is going to have to be an absolutely just... mighty last sector. Brilliant for it. Still out there. It was a nice lap by looking to it. He was up on his best just a minute ago. Let's have a look at what Burnt Fry can manage. I hope my internet sorts itself out because it's just flying him across the track at the minute. 54 0 for Burnt Fry. Uh, uh, Seventh place. That's a good qualifying. Good qualifying. I do apologise for that if you're watching the stream and this is what you're seeing. It's not my fault. Blame Sky Internet, the least a man can get. Even though I pay for the top package they provide, it. Um, I think it's plainly being run by a hamster in a wheel. <laughs> so then, race uh, number two. Twenty minutes of lovely. Uh, so we've got uh, Apex Predator and Sid behind. Here comes the countdown. I'll let you talk the opening lap of this one through. Yeah, you, you carry on, don't you? You're better than me, and I'm off we go. <laughs> I thought you were drinking your beer again, that's what it was. I was, mate, I that was. That was a hell was. of a start by uh, Apex. That was a hell of a blast off the line. Look at the sea of red behind him. It's just red among red among red. They're chasing him down. Oh, a bit of contact. Who was that? It was, there was a hell of a lot of contact at the back. Um. Sparks was involved in that. So it was Browner. Can go back and have a quick so look at that. Kicking off a little bit. Not 100 percent sure what happened, but yeah, Browner and Sparks was definitely caught up in that. Well, it's actually moved Burrow Fry where he started seventh, he's now sixth. Chasing down NM1M. Or N for sure. Sparks just got tagged by Cal. And then, because there was a car then stationary in the middle of the road, that set off absolute hell. Right. 
So that's what that was. It's affected all the drivers though, so everyone's sort of running out of position right now. Including Cal, who finds himself down in tenth place uh, in a battle with P. Gibb and Kirif. Uh, the like you seen on the screen, by the way, is it's on my side. They won't be seeing this. They won't be experiencing that like it's me. Um, so yeah, just an FYI in case you're wondering. No wonder they're crashing. The cars are moving about all over the place. I'm afraid it's not their issue. It's mine because my internet provider. Plainly, has other things to be doing. Trivia, Trivia. Okay, now it's his name. Trevi Trevizio is Trevizio. right on the back. That's the one. He's uh, catching up with Apex. He's got on his slipstream. Not that far behind. Half a second, less than half a second now. He's right under his boot lid. I tell you what's quite that's... impressing me, you know, when I've been watching these guys on board and stuff, and they're really they're having these close battles, just how composed they're keeping it. Mm. Like you don't, you just, you just, it's like they're racing out on their own. It's quite nice yeah. to see. And Marky Boy doing a grand job in third. He's coming under pressure from uh, NM though. Uh, is NM just slide up the inside? Oh yeah. Yeah, they're not giving each other our time. A bit of a penalty. Uh, Sid Barrett, fifth place for Sid at the minute. He's getting chased down by Burntfly. Burntfly's had a, having a great race so far in six. Stop watching Midget Open while life. Marshall, I've got everyone's got the vices, mate. Everyone's got the vices. Midget porn just happens to be mine. It's only a little problem, but I'm trying to. So the, I think one story of the race so far is Sparks. Let's see how, let's see what he can do in the remaining 16 minutes. We know how quick he is. Yeah. Let's see what he can do with the rest of this race. Trevisio up to first now. Apex Predators lost it somewhere. Must have done that. Uh, well, yeah, he must have done that a little while ago because the yeah, replay camera doesn't really. pick it up. That's a big gap that he's pulled as well at the moment, really. Yeah, in these cars, six tenths is a vast yeah. yawning chasm. Uh, Bert Fry's pulled a massive gap to seventh, so the top six are beginning to stream away in their own little race at the minute Burnt Fry is right at the tail end of that and looking to challenge for places higher up he's got three cars right ahead of him uh, so if he can uh, if he can just sort of stay patient pick his opportunities uh, assess the cars in front of him see where they're weak uh, or where they're perhaps struggling to get the traction and then plot your move really That's certainly what he's doing I think Apex might have um, made a bit of a mistake because it's now closing in the back. Back up. It's not such a big gap now. Oh, it's well in the stream. Yeah, it'll be interesting to find out what actually happened. Well, until I can review the proper replay, I couldn't possibly tell you. Yeah, you're right, as we look back from Trebizio's car and see the top six streaming away behind. Apex Predator has got a great run out of there, though. He's looking for a move already. Gives oh, him yeah. a little bit of a bump instead, though. And just letting him know he's there. Um, but these karting lads will be very familiar with bump drafting. That's pretty much what they do all the time. So they will, um, they'll not be averse to a little bit of bump drafting. No. See the top two squabble it out for position third and fourth. I'd love to say we're squabbling to see and then just go really deep. Yeah. He's gone well wide. That's just let Marky Boy through at least. Can Burn Fry capitalise on this? He looks like he's pulling out of the slipstream. Just Burn Fry goes for moving down into T1 on the brakes. Uh, Burn Fry gets that move made up to fifth. Then Marky Boy fifth. is next on the list for Burn Fry. So he's doing, a, he's doing a grab job so far for next-gen racing. 
think he's preferring this car than he did the Megane. I think Group 3s are more his, are more his thing, to be fair, from yeah. speaking to. I, I've I've raced a GT3 championship against him, and he's, he's pretty good in the GT3 cars. Sparks then, ninth for Sparks at the minute, chasing down a race. He has got Cal behind him for company at the minute, though. So positions could yet change. 13 minutes left to run in this race, so all is not yet over. Uh, Kiriff down in 12. What's happened to Kiriff? He's got some damage on his car there by the spring. So his bastard looks like it's been in the wars. He's either been off or been involved in an incident with someone. Kiriff, who had a good performance last time out in the McGann's. Nothing really changed in the top six. It's still Trevisio, Apex Predator 1 2. And Burnt Fire looking to upset the Apple Car just behind there. He's just off the podium position, so he'll be looking to get himself up and in the mix. Sparks is now up to eighth after getting past Weiss. I can't imagine that Weiss put up a fight about that one. Um, these guys will want to play the team game and will help each other out. Next up for Sparks, four seconds down the road is Swaggy. So we'll see if Sparks can reel Swaggy in. Even though when he does that, there's at the minute a four second gap to the top six. So it's going to be quite hard for Sparks to get back up in the mix there, but we know he's a capable driver, so we'll keep an eye on his progress. And meanwhile, NM does look to be piling on the pressure on Burton Fly at the minute you're able to tell that from my terrible internet connection. Yeah, he's, he, he's, yeah, he's under pressure. He's just dropped off the pipe of Marky Blue now. Oh, sorry, he has. He's still getting the slipstream though, so it might be relatively straightforward to get that back. Uh, but Sid will be providing Marky Boy with a little bit of a toe as well. So. Love the noise. Apex Predator has gone for a move, I think, on the outside. Has he got him? I don't think he can get him on the outside of that corner. Mm -hmm. oh, he's, far enough ahead. he's far enough ahead to he put is. him front. Oh, Treviso just hung it on in there on the inside. Yeah. Good racing between those two. Really, yeah. really well played between both yeah. of them. Um, never just one driver that makes a good overtake it's, um, it's both of them that um, keep it clean and give space and respect Trevisio certainly did that just then uh, don't get me wrong though he fought it uh, but he left the space at the um, he left the space on exit as well and that's what made it good racing between those yeah. two coming under a bit of a pressure on his teammate now oh, uh, Sid Barrett's wrote on the uh, his boot lid. <laughs> oh, going to be too much hassle there because it's about the points. Yeah, and they're not, they're not fighting. They'll be looking to help each other out, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, Burnt Fire coming under pressure from um, NM as well. Uh, he's not managed as a real marky boy in as quick. Dream Faith, hello. Thanks for stopping on by. Thank you for tuning in. Swaggy's uh, currently trying to win the contest for who can have the most boring race on your own. He's right in the middle of nowhere right now. Uh, currently being chased down by Sparks, though. Uh, Wace has got some company in Cal. So you remember, Cal was chasing Sparks down. Uh, Wace is trying to be the next-gen gatekeeper, though. We know Cal's a capable driver. How long can Wace hold him off for? Um, I would or say not that can long. Cal get past? Certainly driving a good defensive race right now. But I think Carl's just going to have the overspeed coming down this long back straight. Uh, they just got a better run out of there. And we saw a minute ago just how good moves can be made on here. Can these boys replicate that? Waste goes for the move down the inside. Cow goes for the cutback move. Uh, just unfortunately, just nudges the back end of Waste's car on exit. 
but Cal set that one up quite nicely, I think. Just didn't quite pay off for him at this time. And Brown and P. Gibb having a little bit of a scrap here back in 12. Yeah, no, the person who is winning the most boring race, I'm afraid, is James Tywalt. 14th for James. Five seconds adrift of everyone else. And uh, maybe doing some crocheting in there. Who knows? Done. Wish I was in the same cleaners as every race online. Yeah, well, th th this is what's good about league racing. Because you get drivers like this in leagues. Like, they, people come to league racing because they want clean racing. So. Um, if you want to get involved in this sort of stuff, of course, uh, if you've got a Facebook account, you can look at Next Gen Racing on Facebook. There's a couple of other clubs I endorse as well. Next Gen Racing is just one. Um, they, are, they host a lot of leagues across multiple platforms, though. So if you're into PC racing, um, that sort of, you know, they're a good, they're a good sort of outfit to, to go with. Uh, Mature Racing Club, one that I drive with, they host regular leagues as well as P1 and SimFX. They're all good guys to get involved with. If you're fed up of the, um, but what's what's the word, the rack fest that is the daily races in sport mode, then I, I recommend you check out league racing. You can reinvent your GT experience. So, the top six battle has changed a little bit. Burnt Fry slipped to the back of this. And the top four are starting to run away. So Apex Predator, Trevisio, Sid Barrett and Marky Boy all beginning to um, to pull a gap now to everyone behind them. Uh, Apex Predator has not really been able to get too far ahead though. Just five tenths is the gap now between him and Trevisio. As we look back at the free club 100 drivers behind and just, uh, just stalking their prey. He's um, putting an end under pressure in the slower stuff. He's uh, right on his boot lid. But one key thing about that little battle now is NM's not getting any slipstream from ahead. And you know how powerful the slipstream is on GT Sport. It is everything. Yeah. So now he's not getting that um, aero assistance. He's going to help Bert fly out in his... Um, quest. Sparks has been catching Swargy but not very quickly. Um, I reckon he'll be on his bootleg by the last lap of the race or so but um, to be honest this top six for Sparks unless any of them have any massive accidents he's, he's gone out the window now I'm afraid. Well, we're getting to that territory now. Five minutes to go anything can happen. Yep yep this is this is the chaos time. <laughs> Well, this is the thing, even chaos time, the time when you'd see the most risk being taken by the driver, is still 20 times cleaner than any day the race I've that. ever been. Sorry, sorry to cut off you, that was a hell of a um, drive out of the bank to curve then, but I can't even say his name. Trevisio. That's the one. Yeah, he's right on the tail now of Apex. He's always just down the inside. Three inside. I think he might have got it. Nope. Apex is fighting back. The only problem is Sid is there now. Sid is going to be right on the... Yeah. Well, Five Apex to go for that move back into T1. Let's jump on board with Trevisio and just go and Sid's look gone. at how he did that. Oh, Sid's gone through as yeah, well. Sid's gone through, yeah. We did just catch the end of that. Yeah. Marky Boy's looking for a move on Apex Predator oh, yeah. as well. He's got through as well, I think. No. Oh, now Apex is just, oh, just about on yeah. now. Let's go back and have a look at how Trevisio got here. Perhaps this is big old Banky Boy. Oh, look at that drive. And yeah, just drove straight up. Great move by Trevisio. Some lovely driving shown by these Club 100 guys. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a throttle and brake control. It's spot on. 
Oh, Apex has gone really wide. What's happened to Apex? Is it endurance or is it a race? Um, 20 minutes sprint race, this one. Um, so they're, they're only little races. This is just a team versus team event. So they do, endurance race, you do, they do host endurance leagues and stuff like that, if that's the sort of stuff you're after. But this that you're watching now is just a 20 minute one. Um, nothing, nothing too heavy. Uh, 20 minutes is about the shortest race length you tend to get in league races. Three uh, club of hundred players now pulling away from uh, Apex after his drifting stone. So the top three, the podium currently is red. Currently led by Trevisio with Sid Barrett 84 in second and Marky Boy. And doing a good job in third at the minute. They are beginning to pull away from Apex Predators, getting pressure from behind. Three. Further behind Burnt Fry, sixth place for Burnt Fry is getting dropped slowly by NM up ahead, but um, sixth place is still a good result. Tando Racing Group in the chat, thank you very much. Yeah, the next gen boys are up on this one. Uh, racing against Club 100, but Club 100 showing their class, in my opinion. They're a you can tell these boys do this a lot. Oh, Cal's off. And what happened to Cal? He was chasing down Wace. Uh, it looked like it might just be a an outbreaking down into T1. Yeah, he just got a bit too hot on the brakes. Easily done. We've all done that. Uh, not much change at the top, so let's just keep an eye on what's happening back here. Just see NM go for a move on Apex Predator now for fourth. And just gets that move made down the inside. Apex Predator looks to be setting himself up for a switch back. Apex has got a really great drive out of that back corner though and keeps fourth just by pure driving power. What happened? What's happened to Sparks? Sparks is down in 13th. Yeah, they, he's having a little battle at the moment. Um, he's just been he's keeping an eye on it. He's fighting with yeah, Kerf. Yeah, he, he's not. He's not happy on this car. Well, <clears throat> I did a few little laps in it before the race start. It's a twitchy beast. Mm. A lot of GT3 cars are like that. You need you need laps in the car to get used to it. Uh, and if you've not had that, you, you're going to struggle. Uh, anyone is really, you need to, you need to acclimatise to how the car behaves under brake and acceleration uh, yada yada, you need, to, you need to learn that, that needs to become muscle memory uh, or you're constantly fighting the car, and that's what I was doing in my first few laps uh, you can tell the guys that have practised, i.e. the top six against the guys that probably haven't had as much sim time and are learning the car as they go uh, it's still close racing back here though so at the minute Wace is in a Club 100 sandwich he's got Cal breathing down his neck and he's trying to put pressure on Brown up ahead for 8th place a little bit further back we've got, uh, we've got Sparks, P. Gibb and Kiriff uh, with James Tywall who is looking at other cars but isn't racing any of them at the minute. oh this is the final lap as well this is the final lap. I've completely missed out that the time had ended. So, final lap now. So, it is all up for grabs. Apex Predators just dropped fifth. Adam's got through to fourth. And he's now got one, two, three, four, five, six corners left. Five now to make this change. What is he going to do? That's the question. He's right on his boot lid. Uh, there's no obvious overtaking spots down here, he just kind of needs help, the other guy makes a little bit, bit of a mess of one of his corners, uh, and the run down the straight isn't that long, so let's just clock in with Trevisio, who's done a great job to bring home the win for Club 100 here, uh, Sid Barrett in second, and Marky Boy sideways across the line in third, I love that, 
Uh, NM does bring it home in fourth with Apex Predator coming home in fifth in the end after a very, very hard fought race. A great result for Burnt Fry as well. You've got to be happy with that one, mate. Six for him. We swaggy in seventh place. Uh, Brown is going to bring it home for the 108th position there, just ahead of a swarm of next gen drivers consisting of Wace, Pete Gibb, Sparks, and then Cal comes home in 12th. Kieran from 13th and James Tywall in 14th place. This final confirmation of your results. Confirmation of your victor. Just Trevisio who um was a great result in that one. Let me just save the replay because I might want to make a thumbnail out of that. Yeah, it was a good race. It was absolutely it was. spot on. It was a really good race. So it's been a good night of racing between these guys, it's got to be said. the um, I think the one worry that some people have when they're racing someone they've never raced before is what's their sportsmanship like, especially when you're racing on sim, because it is so easy just to nudge someone wide. Um, I think overall the, the sportsmanship and the racing has been absolutely spot on from both of them. Yeah, uh, there's been no um, major concerns that I've had flagged to me. I'm sure as as host, you may have one or two things to review if possible, but who knows? Um, but no, kudos, massive kudos to the Club 100 lads. There, they've absolutely smashed it tonight, and I think we'd welcome them back any time, really. Well, I would say so. I mean, as you said, it's it was clean racing throughout. Um, you know, I I didn't actually see any. Yeah, a bit of bumping and barging, but nothing too serious. Um, and yeah, I mean, I I think this could be quite a regular regular event, sort of in the next gen sort of um, peak shut shutdown weeks. I was going to say then, you know, <laughs> on the week week breaks stuff, you know. So um, yeah, I mean, I I'd be happy to host another lobby with these guys in it. Well, you never know. You never know, mate. If we if if we ever an exit this lockdown, we can do a real life karting meet up, and then um, I'll get in a commentary booth up there, and I'll just get a megaphone and start shouting at everyone. We'll do we'll do that. <laughs> as long as they've got gravel traps, if I'm racing, <laughs> right? mate, we'll 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 put it in. Don't we? I'll get, I've got some kids sand in the back. We'll do that. <laughs> Jay Elliott, great racing. Yeah, it was, mate. Absolutely spot on. Uh, Man Marshall, great race and agree. Double Dash Motorsport Media, well done. Really enjoyed the racing this evening. Glad, glad you have. Sorry, by the way, for anyone watching about my internet again. It's just, it's not my fault. Uh, it's Sky. Thanks to Chris and John for the comments. You call me by my actual name, Man Marshall. What's wrong with you? You drunk, mate? Um, <laughs> I normally get, I, know, I normally get some crude nickname of some sort, and I quite, I, I look forward to him tuning in because he always comes up with something new. Oh, I've just dropped my phone. Oh, that's not good. There we go. Um, but yeah, thanks for joining me in the commentary booth, mate. Not a problem. Not a problem. Really enjoyed it. Appreciate you jumping in. Stephen Brew, love that. Yeah, mate. It was a good. Um, uh, it was a good race. Good set of races, to be fair. I think overall the Club 100 guys would have just nicked that, but looking at the results without adding anything up, um, especially in, in our in our lobby. Just a question, Chris. Did you? Um, is it a both across both lobbies? The points? No idea. That's a question no. for Jordan, mate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if you mentioned it I'm to afraid. you or not. Because obviously, in this, obviously, I think you're right. In this lobby, the C100 um, guys have probably just picked it by points. But if it's a both across both, you know, next gen boys might have uh, picked up some valid points. You know, yeah, good points in the lobby. So, may have done. Yeah. What I w what I will do. So, uh, once I stop the stream, it'll go into a processing mode, which YouTube keeps it there for about four years. Um, when it eventually leaves processing, you'll be able to watch it again, and I'll have in the description a link to Lobby 2's commentary, um, which was commentated on by a lad called Jack. He did it over on Twitch, but he then always uploads it onto YouTube afterwards. So, um, I'll put the link to that in there. Um, so you can go and check out the action from the other lobby because there was two lobbies running tonight. Um, I'm trying to be polite, yeah. Thanks, mate. Appreciate that. 
<laughs> Great commentary. Cheers, Stephen. Thank you for that. No worries, Jake. Glad to help out, mate. I would have been commentating tonight anyway, so... Um, it's, it's no skin off my nose, mate. Not at all. Cool. Right. Well, this is the point where I normally end the stream and um, go and grab another drink. Um, so I will thank everyone for tuning in. I think at peak we had like 20, 30 viewers tonight, so which is quite a lot for my streams because I don't always get a lot. Cue small violin music. <laughs> um, so thank you very much for joining in. If you have done, if you're watching this after it's been live, thank you for coming back and checking it out. Um, drop a like and a comment and um, subscribe and do all that. Um, Kira, thanks for organising. Uh, mate, cheers to you boys for giving up your time and jumping on your sims and getting involved in this sort of stuff, lads. We really appreciate it. Um, it's given this lot something to do in the week off. So, appreciate you jumping in. You're welcome back anytime. Um, and yeah, that's it. So, thank you very much from me. Uh, for tuning in please obviously subscribe and like and all that sort of stuff because it really does help me out it makes me all warm and fuzzy inside um anything you'd like to say john before we clock off for the night uh, no i'd just like to uh thank you chris for uh, let me join and jump on your waffle <laughs> your weekly waffle um <laughs> no it's been great fun it's been great fun um yeah just thanks for watching guys and cool. uh, just make sure you subscribe to chris's uh, channel cool 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 and if um if you want to get involved in any of this racing i will throw links in the description to next gen and all that sort of stuff as well so you can click click away to your heart's content and get involved in some of this stuff for yourself and see what all the fuss is about okay thanks for that i'll uh, wish you all the best i hope you all have a great week and we'll catch you in the next one goodbye goodbye